Hello everyone and welcome once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Today I will be reviewing in addition to a cigar. This is a uh, single malt scotch whiskey. Glen Fittich, 12 year old. Now this is just a small bottle. This is a 375 milliliter. As this is relatively expensive, um, 375 milliliters cost me, I think it was $27, I believe it was. So, uh, yeah, you're talking upwards of $55, $60 for a you know, full size uh, 750 milliliter or a uh, one liter, uh, you know, well over $60 for a bottle. So, uh, Whenever I can, uh, if it's a whiskey I haven't had before, uh, I, I try to get a small bottle of it, even though, you know, per milliliter you may be paying a little bit more. I'd, I'd rather spend $27 on something that was, eh, okay, than to spend, you know, $60 or $70 on this larger quantity and say, eh, okay. But, uh, anyway, so it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and get this poured. That way... Or dram. That way um, it can sit and settle while I'm talking about the cigar I'm going to be reviewing. See what all it says on the label here, if it'll tell us the necessities. Um, age 12 years. Signature malt, matured in the finest, Oloroso sherry and bourbon casks, and is renowned for its beautifully balanced nose and fresh, rich, rich complex flavors, yada, yada, yada. It does not specifically say unchill filtered or no caramel added. So, we don't know. There is definitely a sherry nose to it. And this is bottled at 40%, I believe. Yes, 40% alcohol. It certainly has uh, an oak character on the tongue. The woodiness, not necessarily the vanilla that you would get from an oak, but straight oak, uh, the wood itself. Being a single malt, start off with one teaspoon of water. Put my little cover over the glass. Serves a couple of purposes. One, being that I'm outside, keep things like bugs and leaves and that kind of thing from uh, landing in my glass. And The other would be to uh, help trap the um, the, uh, the nose scents um, as the water helps to open up the, uh, the scents that the alcohol captures. Put the lid over it and it uh, put the lid over it and as the alcohol and the water mixing together starts releasing the flavors and the scents uh, into the glass, they don't just escape, especially being, you know, outside it's a little bit windy. That way I can... Well, okay, yeah, okay, I'm picking stuff up. I'll let that sit for a little while. So, uh, okay. We'll, uh, get our cigar together and we'll be right back. Hi, we're back with Scorpion Scar Reviews. Today, we will be reviewing the Oliva. This is the Master Blend uh, series. This is their uh, number three Master Blends. This is a uh, box pressed torpedo and it is in a 6x52 ring. Let me give a little look see here. There you go. The uh, 
pack has a, a slight bit of sponginess to it, but for the most part, it's pretty firm. Dark, uh, almost uh, coffee-colored wrapper. Tight but visible seams, very minor, minor veining. Feels like uh, like a dry leather. Just some general tobacco type notes on the nose of the wrapper. Now the foot has a little bit of some grassy notes, a little bit of spice, like um, some general kitchen spices, a little bit of cedar in there. Some other things. Not sure what else I'm getting out of that. Alright. Using my Zycar cutter. Now in the past, I've done the... see if we can see here. Done an angled cut like this. I've only done that a few times and I find that every time I do that I, I seem to get a bit of an uneven burn um, now whether I was just co coincidence or not I, I don't know I couldn't say but uh, maybe we'll um, tell you what we'll go and try that again we'll give it an angled cut once again See, slightly angled cut there. We'll see what happens. If I once again get an uneven burn, then um, we'll know. Nice spices. There's some cumin, some just general type kitchen spices. Into white pepper, a little bit of cedar. Maybe a little bit of leather in the background. Alright, so we'll get toasted. And, uh, maybe. There we go. I don't know what the deal was. I had a problem with my lighter earlier. The uh, little control knob on the bottom that adjusts your flame. Just fell off. I don't know what the deal was. So I uh, applied a little dab of glue to the hole and uh, slid it back. Well, not to the hole, but underneath there, that's also where you, you know, r refill it. I put some glue around the edge of that and uh, stuck this back on and hopefully it'll hold. But anyway, it is what it is. So uh, we'll get lit up and I'll be right back. Might be running out of gas. See what happens. I got it lit. Seems to be lit pretty evenly. Right off the bat, I'm getting that blast of pepper. Very dry smoke. There's something else going on, but that, that pepper is really dominant. And uh, that smoke is just so dry. I mean, it it's, starts just behind, your, just behind your teeth and just runs all the way down and into your sinus is just so dry. There's definitely some tobacco type flavors in there. Just you know nothing specific. Just basic tobacco. Mm. getting that 
feels like I've swallowed some some snuff. It's just just that thick, deep, dark, you know, nicotine. So we'll see if uh, if it mellows out a bit or what's going to happen. I'll come back somewhere in the first third there. So here we are, just about 15 minutes in. Now, a little experiment with the angled cut, as you can see, right there. And it's burning a little bit unevenly. Where the cut was longer, there is longer wrapper up towards the, the ash end of it, where it was shorter, there is less ash. Now it's not showing up quite as much now as it was just before I restarted the video. It, it seems to be trying to correct itself, so I'm not going to do anything with this angled cut just yet. As long as it corrects itself, we're good to go. But if it uh, seems like it's going to continue to have that angled burn all the way down, uh, then I will uh, take my, my cutters and see what happens uh, if I cut that off straight across, see if it'll if it'll burn evenly from there. But, you know, it is what it is, whatever, we'll see what happens. A little experiment here. I would like to mention, uh, you know, this is a 6x52 torpedo, box pressed. Uh, it, it's got some weight to it, so it's uh, a fairly dense pack. Um, now, there was more ash on this than what you see now. Um, while the camera was off, I had set the cigar down in my ashtray, and it, it wasn't quite balanced, and it slid into the ashtray, and the ash that was there, which was about as much as you see now, um, it, you know, nosedived into the sand in the bottom of the ashtray, and, you know, that was it for that. However, I did not have to relight it. Um, and it's better than if it had fallen the other way onto the ground and, you know, risk damaging the cigar uh, to where uh, it would uh, alter the smokeability. But we'll see what happens. So we're into the first third. It's a very pungent retro hill coming coming through the nose, it's just, it hits you with, uh, almost like when you dive into a pool and the water goes up your nose, something along those lines. Flavor-wise, mid and rear palate, there is something starting to come through. Very pleasant. I might have to pause this video if the dog didn't stop barking. I think he sees something walking through the woods over there. We'll give them a minute, see what happens here. Anyway, uh, so as far as the flavors, maybe a little bit of meatiness. Maybe that's what I'm starting to get. It's real subtle, short on the finish, and there's still that that blast of nicotine. It's, it's like a knot, kind of deep in my throat right here, like I swallowed some chew. We'll see what happens with that. Take a little gander at our whiskey that's been sitting for 15 minutes under cover. Remember this had one teaspoon of water added to it. Smell some fresh, uh, like, like a green apple. Now, my nose isn't as well versed in whiskeys as uh, you know the whiskey es experts. The uh, as my friend Ralphie likes to call them the, the punters out there, but uh, and certainly am I nowhere near as good as Ralphie from Ralphie.com. R A L F Y.com. I keep giving you a plug, Ralphie. Hopefully, you know it. For me, that seems to be the dominant character, is that green apple. I can definitely, 
can smell the alcohol. Now, I don't know if that's really an accurate description, but it's giving me that sensation in my nose, the kind of burn that you get from the alcohol. Now, with the cover off, out in the open air, that alcohol burn on the nose is starting to dissipate. I'm getting more of the apple. This will continue to open up as it sits. I may end up adding some more water. I'm not sure yet. Let's take a little taste here. Has a rye character to it. The arrival is rye. A long finish that's very bourbon-esque. Here comes the oak. Once again, not the vanilla from the oak, just oak, the wood itself. Any other changes? Let's see. Long finish. Now it's gone. Okay. I'm going to let this sit. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on it just to keep bugs and that kind of thing out of it. So uh, we'll come back somewhere in the second third of this cigar. Um, we'll see how it progresses, and we'll see how the whiskey's progressing. Be right back. this uh, Glenfiddich. I sat for uh, about another 15 minutes under cover. I haven't added any more water to it yet. It softened up a little bit. That, that alcohol burn on the nose has really mellowed. The apple has really mellowed as well. There's something else coming in, but I'm not sure what it is. Once again, a rye arrival. Transitions into a very bourbon-esque character on the finish. And in comes some cherry, followed by some cola. Still have a little bit of that woodiness, uh, real subtle. quite good. Now I've been smoking this cigar for oh, a little over 30 minutes, 35 minutes, something like that. Developed a blister. There it is, right there. Starting to split. But it doesn't look like it's progressing any. The cigar has mellowed out a bit. Still burning kind of wonky. Now, if you look at right there where the wrapper isn't burning, if you follow it down, that is the long end of the cut. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll just watch it and um, see if it corrects itself. It, uh, it had done this early on when I first lit it, and it, it did correct itself. That would start to burn down. So, we'll see if that does burn down again. Picking up some leather notes. Some meatiness. There is a peppery tickle. <coughs> peppery tickle on the nose. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I can see that the ash is starting to develop a rather deep crack, and it's following 
the contours of the burn line. I'm not sure how well you can see this. I'm going to go ahead and ash this because I don't think it's going to hold on. I'll just give it a light tap. Yep, came off right where I saw the crack. So, uh, okay, we're good to go there. And it does look like, to me, it looks like this is where that little piece wasn't burning. I can see it starting to darken and shrivel and curl inward. So I think it's trying to correct itself. So I'm not going to touch it up just yet. There are definitely some more flavor characters trying to come through, but they're melded together. So we'll see if they open up and come forward. Now, I don't know exactly what I paid for this cigar offhand. I don't really remember, and when I purchased it, I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to the prices of the cigars. Um, I purchased this at J&R Cigar Outlet uh, along with um, about 59 other cigars. So I, I had about 60 cigars and I bought one of these large stinky ashtrays. Um, and I paid uh, just shy of $300 for everything. So, uh, 60 cigars and an ashtray. I bought several individual cigars. I bought a three-pack. I bought a five-pack. I bought a bundle of something. Um, I bought... Uh, I think that was it. Um, mostly, they were... You know, the bulk of it was, of course, the, the bundle of 20 and then the five pack, and then there's a tin of something. Uh, bought a couple of the flavored cigars, uh, like the uh, the Javas. Uh, I got that in a five pack. Then I bought uh, Moon Trace. It was in a little tin. I haven't had any of those yet. Now, I have had Javas in the past. Um, I know I like those. That's why I went ahead and bought a five pack. But I don't generally smoke the flavored cigars, so I don't buy large quantities of those. Uh, once in a while as a treat, if I'm in the mood, I'll smoke a flavored cigar. But anyway, uh, I'll continue this on. I'll get oh somewhere uh, into the final third, and I'll be back. Okay, I haven't gotten into the final third yet, but after that last segment, that that little piece of the wrapper that was sticking up that I thought was going to correct itself did not. The rest of the scar kept burning way down and that stayed way up there. So I went ahead and nipped off a nice straight even line there and then I touched up where it uh, wasn't burning. And now you can see the burn char characteristics have changed. This, this piece that's flaking outward, that was the bit that wasn't burning at all, that was sticking up. And the rest of it has just kind of mushroomed around the uh, initial, the, the, the original ash before I touched it up. So this is uh, quite loose and uneven, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and ash this because it's going to be a, a problem, I'm sure. Okay, you see the center portion has come off. But this, this piece right here, that's the part that hadn't caught on its own. I'm going to try to tap it around the edge a little bit, edge of the ashtray, just, just to neaten it up so it doesn't start flaking all over the place in my lap and everything. There we go. And uh, this, the blister and the split that was there, you can see it right there, right here. Try to get the light on it. Yeah. The sun's going down, it's going through the trees, so the light's kind of going in and out. But uh, that split doesn't seem to be affecting the burn. I'd also like to mention that when I evened out the cut and corrected the burn line, 
The flavor profile has changed some. Almost instantly I picked up uh, some charred meat, some heavily grilled meat, uh, real tasty. And uh, as, as the burn went down a little bit, it softened, but uh, bug there. But uh, the grilled meat seems to be the dominant flavor at the moment. So I will continue this on, and next time I come back, I will be in the final third. Be back. I added a second teaspoon of water to the whiskey. It mellowed it out quite a bit. It's taken on a, a totally different character. I'm wondering if maybe uh, that second teaspoon of water was too much. Maybe I should have done half a teaspoon. That rye arrival is gone. And that bourbon-esque finish that starts to carry through has really mellowed out. It's uh, just real subtle. The cola is almost completely gone and there is no cherry at all left. Just a little bit of the bourbon character. And there's something else there, but I can't quite determine what it is. The nose has a little bit of a vanilla character to it, very slight. The alcohol burn is definitely mellowed out. That wood character is all but gone, just very subtle. So I definitely will not be adding any more water to this. I'll let it sit with the lid on it to keep the bugs out. And we'll see how it progresses sitting there. Be back uh, with another uh, segment on the cigar review. See you in a bit. Here we are on the final third. Still burning unevenly. And we have that rather sizable section where uh, it's just not burning at all. I'll give it a minute, see if it'll correct itself. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the band at this point. Still smoking coolly. Um, just starting to soften up a little bit and warming up a little bit, not, not too bad. Here we go. Wrapper came off fairly easily once I started pulling at the actual seam. Hmm. Here comes that sun, right in between the trees there. I have to make some adjustments here. Okay. Late in the second third, just before I started transitioning into the final third. The uh, characteristics changed a bit. Started picking up some earth. A little bit of mineral. That meeting, <clears throat> excuse me. That meatiness was still there, and then as I got into the final third, the meatiness disappeared completely. And there's a, a bit of pepper that was starting to come through. Ever so slight hint of leather. Real pleasant. The finish has a little bit of a little bit of meatiness going on there. Not grilled meat, just a, a general meatiness. Smoke's not quite as dry. Been real pleasant. I've I've really enjoyed the 
flavor transitions. As you can see, this side doesn't want to quite burn. I, I see it's glowing, and it's, it's, it's trying to correct itself, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and roll it around the side of the ashtray a little bit. Now, there was more ash on here than this a moment ago. Uh, I set it down in the ashtray, and uh, a big chunk of the ash fell off. So it doesn't hold on very long, uh, less than an inch before it wants to fall off. So be prepared to uh, either wear it or ash it. I'll continue this on into the nub and uh, I'll be back. Here we are uh, into the nub. I've been smoking this for an hour and 40 minutes. The uh, burn did correct itself. Now, in between this segment and the last segment, it did go out. I uh, had it sitting in the ashtray and I took a drink of the whiskey and picked the cigar back up and it went out. So uh, I relit it and uh, it seems to be okay so far. Still has that meaty character. And there's something else there that is reminiscent of an old car. Um, the engine running, just the, the smells that an old car puts out, the smell on the interior. Not you know not at all unpleasant. Just uh, you know old cars have a different smell, and if you were to translate that smell into a taste, um, I guess that's uh, what I'm picking up. Subtle. Still that meatiness there. That old car taste is kind of going away now. It didn't last real long, just a, a few draws. It's an inter interesting thing about cigars is you can pick up a taste on one draw and the next draw it's completely gone. So Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this review here. It's been a rather lengthy review with uh, adding the whiskey review in between uh, cigar segments. So, uh, I'll say that this, uh, this Oliva Master Blend Series Torpedo 6x52 has been a real pleasant cigar. A lot of nice transitions. Had some uh, a little bit of pepper in there. Um, not real dominant, so I like that. I'm, I'm not a real big fan of the heavily peppered cigars. Slight hints of leather here and there. A little bit of earthiness. Some uh, definite grilled meat that was real pleasant that lasted through um, the bulk of the cigar, really. A little bit of mineral in there. Slight hint of leather for a short time. So, uh, yeah, a real enjoyable cigar. So, uh, I thank you for once again watching Scorpion, uh, for watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews. I'll catch you next time.